everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today is gonna to be a review of the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra DMC 2.0 Class D amplifier. Now, as many of you know, I've had a bit of a revelation recently with Class D amplifiers. I always had a bit of a bias against them just because the early Class D amplifiers and a lot of the ones I've heard just didn't have any, they didn't sound very musical to me. They were kind of thin, sterile, not very lifelike. I mean, now, most Class D amplifiers have pretty good bass response, um, but just through the mid-range in the areas where we hear best in mid-range vocals, things like that, it just sounded cold and sterile and just not very lifelike. So obviously I had a big revelation with the Cambridge Evo 150. And then with this amplifier, I've had another revelation, which we'll talk about in the last segment of the video. So the uh, Star Crimson is a 250 watt by two into eight ohm, 500 watt by two into four ohm amplifier. It is stable into two ohms, although it does current limit to protect itself. But that's important because there are a lot of amplifier or a lot of speakers that have wicked impedance drops at crossover points. One that comes to mind is the Wilson Watt, famously, the original version, at the crossover point dipped to like 1.2 or 1.5 ohm so it was a bear to drive um, and magna pads which aren't hard to drive they're more of a resistive load than they are a reactive load you know like a, a conventional dynamic speaker but they can still require a lot of current and this is a very high current amplifier um, you've heard me use the, the term before fast amp this is an amazingly fast amp we'll talk about it in the end so it's a class d that uses ganfet technology now ganfets are transistors ganfet stands for gallium nitrate field effect transistor. And all class D amplifiers are switching amplifiers. So they switch on and off and they use that switching to create the waveform, the analog signal we hear. And by the way, this is not a, class D is not digital. And this is certainly not a digital amp. This is an analog device. It just goes about the amplification different than kind of what we're used to. So in the old days, we used to use a lot of regular bipolar JFET BJ FET transistors, or real, real commonly in high end audio, was the MOSFET, the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And they were great for certain amplifier topologies. In Class A, a MOSFET was great because the transistor never turned off, and I'll explain why that's important. So you had the transistor created the entire wave, the entire sine wave of the music, right? And it never turned off. Now, a lot of amplifiers were class A, B, which means they were biased into class A for a few watts. And some these days you can still find, you know, it's a great amp from Advanced Paris that you can turn into a basically a class A amp for about, I think, 25% of its rated power. So it does that full sine wave with the, the single transistors. But in that mode, it's not super powerful just because it doesn't have a lot of power and reserve. So with class A, B amplifiers, they'd be class A for a portion of their output and then switch to class B. Now class B is a switching amplifier, just like class D is, but in a different way. So in a class A, B amplifier, when it goes into class B, a transistor produces the positive side of the sine wave, but as that transistor approaches the zero dB line where it's going to hand off to do the negative sine wave to another transistor, as it approaches that zero dB line, the transistor, as it gets close to switching off, it becomes very nonlinear and there's distortion introduced. And as the other transistor that's going to do the bottom half of the waveform is starting to switch on, that's in its most nonlinear region as well. So you've got distortion as one turns off and distortion as the other turns on. And that distortion is called crossover distortion, sometimes called notch distortion, because it looks like a notch if you saw it on a oscilloscope. Well, with a class D amplifier, especially the GANFET ones, it switches so fast that it uses that switching. And it, I'm not going to go into a big, long, uh, in-depth explanation of it. You can find out more. There's more in-depth YouTube videos on it, but that switching is so fast that there's no chance for crossover distortion to occur, and it forms the wave in a different method. And GANFETs can switch, I mean, it, it is a magnitude, maybe a quadruple magnitude faster than a standard transistor can or a standard MOSFET transistor can. So the nice benefit is you get class A sound, and we'll talk about that in the, in the later half of the video. You get that class A characteristic, some of it, with this particular amplifier. Now, this amplifier is a dual mono design. It is two separate mono amplifiers in a single chassis. If you wanted to, Orchard Audio will do, they do do this in a mono block. So you'd have two separate chassis. 
It is also a fully differential balanced amplifier, which I think is really, really cool. Now, we're going to spin it around and look at the back, and I'm also going to open up the top and give you a tour of the inside, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, with the dual mono design. So um, the Orchard Audio amplifier is a $4,000, $3,999 amplifier as you see it, as we're going to see it today. Um, and if you want to, there are a couple of other options. This has an option in it, and I'll talk about it when we spin it around and get to the back. So give me a couple minutes to reset, and uh, we'll come back and look at the back of this thing. Then we'll go take a look at the inside, and then I'll tell you what I think of it. So here we are looking at the back of the Stark, Minson, Stark Crimson Ultra DMC 2.0. And as you can see, it is a mono uh, section, mono, and there's so two mono sections, and you'll see inside when we open it up. And it is a fully balanced unit. Um, so IEC power inlet. Now, this is an interesting option in this particular amplifier. You can get it with just as you see it here, or you can buy what this does in a separate box if you want to. Leo, the designer of these amplifiers, is a, a really smart guy. So what this is, the amplifier is, is truly balanced amplifier. The topology is truly balanced, but not everybody has balanced preamps or balanced gear. So what Leo did, and he sells this separately, he created a box that could take a single ended in and turn it into a differential ballast, balanced signal. So what we have to do on this particular amp, because I don't have, I do have a balanced preamp, but I'm not, I'm gonna just demonstrate it this way. And we plug in the balance cables and now I can use a single-ended input and get full balanced performance, which I think is really remarkable. So these are my inputs. So again, it's, you know, fully balanced. This little addition to this amplifier, or you can buy the box separately, takes a single-ended input and turns it into a true balanced uh, input for the amp to take. You can see really good quality binding posts for the uh, speakers. If you want to, um, Orchard Audio will, for an extra charge, um, put uh, WBT connectors on there. And WBTs are probably, you know, the best uh, speaker connectors in the world, I think. They're really well made and not inexpensive. So anyway, that's the backside of the Star Crimson Ultra DMC 2.0. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Um, and again, it's this one is unique in, or not unique, but this one is different in that it has the balanced, single-ended to balanced uh, module built into the amplifier. And we'll see it when we look inside. So give me a couple minutes, we'll go look inside, and then we'll come back and talk about how it sounds. Well, here's a look inside the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra. Now this amp, as I'd mentioned, was 200, is rated at 250 watts a channel into eight ohms, 500 watts a channel into four ohms. And you can see by the design, <coughs> excuse me, the power supplies are, it's a totally mono amplifier. It's just two mono amps in a single chassis, which is way convenient. Um, as you can see from the power supplies, they're huge. And that's what gives this thing its immense amount of power. There is over 87,000 microfarads of capacitance in this amplifier. And it's the capacitance in the power supplies and in the amp modules that give it the speed and give it the agility to react absolutely instantly to incoming transients. And it's just remarkable. You can see by the layout, no, no uh, compromises were made. This is just beautiful and elegant and really well laid out. The only point that they share anything is at the AC inlet. Now, this board right here allows you to put single-ended in, but get balanced out on the back. And we, we, we saw that when we spun it around, how you use that. Or you can just go balanced in, because it is a truly fully balanced design amplifier. Um, it's just hats off to Leo, the designer and engineer of this thing. This is incredibly well-constructed, beautifully built and uh, it rewards you in so many different ways because of the way it's built. So I'm gonna put the lid back on it. We're gonna go back in the uh, studio and I will share with you my listening impressions. So as you can see, looking inside this amplifier, it's extraordinarily well designed and very, very well built. Um, Leo, the designer and uh, engineer and owner of uh, Orchard Audio, uh, is a very intelligent guy, obviously. And you can see he put a lot of care, a lot of effort into designing a really, really high quality amp. And again, the dual mono and the fully differential balanced amplifier. Um, and at 4,000 bucks, I think this thing is a, actually quite a good value. So what did I think of the sound quality? Well, this amplifier, is absolutely ruthless. And let me qualify that. 
whatever you plug into it, the sound of that gear is the sound that will come out of your speakers. This imparts no sonic changes or characteristic of its own on the signal going through it. It just amplifies it. And I think that's remarkable. We've always talked about, and audiophiles have always talked about the proverbial straight wire with gain. Well, I think this is the closest I've ever seen to an amplifier that really is straight wire with gain. It imparts no characteristic. It is completely neutral. It is completely free of any sonic character, which is amazing because whatever signal you put in is the signal you're going to get out to your speakers. So if you have a, a, a preamp that's got a certain character, you're going to get that character. It's just going to be amplified. And I think that is really important. Now, is it a band-aid for bad sounding stuff? No, it isn't. It's going to expose all of that because it's just whatever that sounds like you're going to hear. Um, so it imparts no, no changes to the signal on its own. It is neutral. It is balanced. Throughout the entire frequency range, there was no fault I could find. The bass was solid and detailed and deep and articulate and so fast. Um, probably the fastest amp I've ever heard. Just so much current, so much power delivery, so fast. The amplifier has a very high damping factor, which means it takes charge of your speaker. It takes charge, especially in the woofer, especially large woofers. Today, there are these days, I should say, with the prevalence of retro speakers with large woofers or open baffle speakers with large woofers, you know, you get a 12 or 15 inch woofer. Once it starts moving, it doesn't want to stop. It wants to continue to oscillate. Well, think of it like an old car with a bad suspension going over railroad tracks. It's going to bob and weave and oscillate for, you know, another mile down the road. Well, this has the control and the damping to be able to take that 15 inch woofer that wants to keep moving because it's got a lot of mass and stop it instantly and make sure it's ready to go for the next note. So that that control and that grip is really important. Now, there's a, a phrase a lot of people use and some people like and some people don't called Pratt or pace, pace, rhythm and timing. Um, and I've not I've not used that term in quite a while, but this is probably one of the few occasions I might apply part of that. Um, as far as pace, obviously, pace is dictated by whatever the music you listen to, how many beats per minute or whatever. Rhythm, again, that's the musical term. Um, timing, however, I think is an amplifier thing because this amplifier can deliver the power it needs to instantly and then pull back instantly. So it can stop and start on a dime very quickly. And then your transients mean that the transients absolutely are unimpeded in their in their peaking. And it's so clean and so detailed that as that transient decays, you hear all of that decay. Many of you know, I listen to a lot of classical music. And one of the things that I listen for in, you know, in audio equipment is the ability to sense the room. Now, classical music typically, obviously, it's recorded in concert halls because there's, you know, 100 or 200 people on stage. So you can't do it in a studio very well. Um, they used to do it in film and film on uh, sound stages in Hollywood, but not anymore. So a lot of time, you know, there'll be Chicago Symphony Orchestra records at Symphony Hall. And there is you can hear the boundaries of that, those rooms with because the transients are really quick, but the decay as it fades out into the room and starts to bounce around, you get a sense for the size of the room. And I think that's really, really important. And again, it's because this doesn't stand in the way of anything. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. So we talk about imaging, and I think amplifiers contribute to imaging, but only just slightly. All right. If it's a normal amplifier, maybe it has its own sound coloration, and that might impact imaging or how we perceive imaging. Um, if it doesn't have a very super low noise floor, and this has one of the no lowest noise floors I've ever seen, then obviously the noise floor contributes to the loss of detail, which obviously impacts imaging and soundstage. Also, too, I think the amplifier, when it if it is clipping or if it can't deliver the, the transients fast enough, that impacts your sense of space and your sense of, you know, uh, the power of the orchestra, let's say. This does none of those things. It absolutely gets out of the way and it provides the, the whatever the signal you put in is the signal that's going out to your speakers just amplified. And at that point, it's up to the speakers to image and do the thing that they do best based on their design. And so uh, I had a lot of I had a number of different speakers hooked up to it. I had my big Elax and they sounded wonderful. I had the energy reference and they sounded amazing because they're just they do a really good job with bass. And this had the current and the power to keep those things going and keep them in check a little bit. 
Um, I put the ELAC uh, DBR62s, the debut reference on there, and that was very good. A uh, beautiful image, very detailed sound. Um, I put the old bronze speakers, the German speakers, the eight inch three-way bookshelf, and they sounded really good on it as well. Um, that's a sealed box, so there's not, typically there's not a lot of low bass in sealed boxes. They roll off super smooth. This had some good authority because this amplifier could take control of that woofer. And I put the uh, Monitor Audio Silver 100s on it and, oh my God, they disappeared. And the imaging, that's one of the things that monitors do really well is they image beautifully. And of course, with that eight inch woofer, they've got really good low end. Um, and so that was a great combination with this amplifier. So I think, I'm not sure you could pair this amplifier with a, a inappropriate speaker. So now, over the weekend, I grabbed it and I ran over to a buddy of mine's house and he's got a pair of Maggie 0.7s and he normally runs uh, single ended tube gear. And we hooked this thing up and, and ran from his tube preamp, his very expensive tube preamp, from his very expensive tube DAC, from his very expensive CD transport, because he won't stream. Don't ask me why. And uh, he was absolutely his mouth, his jaw hit the floor. How good those Maggie sounded with this amp. Now, yes, all of that tube gear in front of it, that sound was coming through absolutely clearly as could be. This imparted no character, just gave him that sound. And the, his tube amplifiers, which are very nice and extraordinarily expensive, they're not fast. Tube amplifiers, tubes are voltage devices. This is a current device and music is AC, alternating current. So you need current, not just voltage, which is why tube amps have output transformers. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into that, but he was completely blown away, asked me how much it cost, asked if they made mono blocks, all kinds of other stuff. So I don't know what he's gonna do. I think it's funny because this is this guy is the tube master and has been for as long as I've known him, but maybe we changed his mind, I don't know. So the Star Crimson, Ultra is an outstanding amplifier. It is pure to the source. It will give your speakers absolutely the signal you feed it, just amplified and with an immense amount of power control and current. Uh, I can't give it high enough praise. It, in the 45 or so years I've been doing this, I'm not sure I've heard a better amplifier or one that was as close to a straight wire with gain as this is. So uh, highly recommend it, highly recommend it. Um, and you know, if you're looking at separates, you got to consider this. I would also consider if you're looking at separates and you're looking at preamps to match with it, I would probably spend an equal amount on the preamp as what this, uh, amplifier costs of $4,000 because this, this amplifier will scale up. I, I'm, I'm not sure you could spend $20,000 and get a better amplifier. I'm not sure you could spend $25,000 and get a better amplifier. That's how good this is. Um, and just amazing. So. I'm totally impressed. I, I've become a class D convert, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a like and please subscribe. 80% of the folks that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And honestly, subscribing would really help the channel. The more subscribers I have, the more credibility I garner with the manufacturers. So it makes it easier for them to want to send me gear to review. And I think that's really important. And hats off to Orchard Audio for, for Leo for actually sending me this amp for review, um, and especially with a guy with a small channel like mine. So again, please subscribe. It really does help the channel. Um, and, because, and I want to get more equipment in and more stuff to review, uh, hopefully for not only your edification, but also your entertainment. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I have a ball doing this stuff and I hope you enjoy it as well. Anyway, so like, subscribe, comment. Anybody who's commented knows I respond to the comments. I read the comments. Please share with me your opinions. Please share with me your playlists. I want to put together a community post with anonymously with your playlist in it, Spotify, Title Co, Buzz, or Amazon. I don't care. We're going to put it all in there and let maybe expose ourselves to new music that we don't normally listen to that might be really great. Um, and that's and that's what this is all about, listening to music and finding new stuff. And I just think that's the best part of it, personally. Um, and I have my, my friend Brian has already given me one playlist. I need you guys to pitch in and give me some more, and I'll put those on the community post. Full disclosure, in the description, Amazon affiliate links, I make a tiny commission, doesn't affect your price, doesn't affect your ability to return a product. Further down are my playlists. In between are the list of all the equipment I have in the studio that I use for reviews and things like that. 
Um, and again, playlists at the bottom. A lot of the playlists have tracks on them that I use for uh, reviewing equipment. Um, some of the reviews, you know, I had a playlist for the MXN10 and the, uh, and the Evo 150. You know what? I still use those tracks in reviewing this because they're really good tracks for evaluating sound. So anyway, please like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram. I'd be grateful for that. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm just so grateful for the time you give me to watch my videos. I mean, I, it's just humbling uh, and very rewarding and a ball. I'm having a ton of fun doing this and I hope I can, that enthusiasm comes across. I just, I really love this stuff and I really want to share that enthusiasm with you guys and share that the discovery of new music and, you know, how to, you know, enjoy it the best possible ways. So again, please like, subscribe, comment, all that wonderful stuff. This is Ed Homewood, the old guy hi-fi channel, signing off and saying, it's now time for you to go listen to some music. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.